Urban, most people are running the spread. They're all a little bit different. You're going to talk us through a play that's a little bit unique to Ohio State and Justin Fields is the perfect quarterback to run this play. Yeah, this is, this is my favorite play of the spread. So the, the spread offense, remember it's all about equating numbers. The original spread, as we were talking earlier, was I, I, I really believe it was Bill Snyder. And it was 1990, 89, right around there. And Michael Bishop, he was at Kansas State, and they ran something where he read the defensive end. That was the first time I saw, I saw it. And that started people like myself, a young coach, start studying and say, what are they doing? And so the idea being, I'm going to read, I'm going to equate numbers by reading one defender. And so the first play that everybody started to put in in the 90s was inside zone read. Right. We're going to read the end, tailbacks inside, but the perfect spread run has a way to attack the inside right. and the perimeter. Right. The base one is the tailbacks inside, the quarterback, if he keeps it, becomes the outside. So at Florida, probably in back in 04, 05, 06, Dan Mullen was my offense coordinator, and we put this play together, it's called Bash. And Bash now just flips the tailback and the quarterback. Your quarterback is now the inside runner, your tailback is the outside runner. In spread football, the objective is to equate numbers. Once again, you see they have seven defenders. There's six blockers for Ohio State. Okay, so you have to read one, and that's how you equate numbers in the spread offense. You're gonna read the defensive end. Tight end's gonna block out, tackle's gonna block him, these four offensive linemen, guard, center, guard, and tackle, are going to block these four. The tailback's going to come across. The quarterback, Justin Fields, as you can see the stripe of his helmet, is going to stare right at that defensive end. Right. It's the same as an inside zone read, only flip personnel. Take a look at this. This is executed really well by the offensive line. You can see the defensive end is taking the quarterback, right. and he's handed the ball off. And you're going to see, once we get the viewers on the clear board, yeah, like the clear board we're going right? to show this exact same play, and we're going to show the actual read, and then we're going to come back and show the videotape where Justin actually pulls it and scores a touchdown. All right, Jerry, back in the early 90s, when this spread phenomenon often started to take shape, the fundamentals or fundamental qualities of a spread offense, this is what they are and what they were. Number one, the reason people started looking into that was they wanted to equate numbers. You've heard that many, many times. Right. You don't want to run the ball into unblocked defenders. Equate numbers in the run and in the pass. Number two, you look at Alabama, you look at Ohio State, you look at Oklahoma. Those are probably the three best uh, spread teams out there. They're very balanced. You can't say they're just run the ball. And I used to say 250, 250. Ideally, at the end of the game, I actually would stare at the scoreboard and I'd see 250, 250. That was, I, that's the perfect offense right. if you have balance. And then the final part, which is going to lead us in this play, you want to attack all areas of the field. First, you need an inside run. I know this is very obvious, but I want the view to really grab a whole concept of this. You want an inside run for a lot of reasons. First, to set the tempo, but you need an inside run. Second, you need outside run, because if you don't have outside run, of course, you're going to just defend inside run. So you need inside, outside, and then you need play action off of both. And that's sometimes where offense gets stopped. Uh, stopped. They don't have play action off the inside or outside. So, so let's go through the play here. The offense line is going to zone left. These five guys are going to block these five guys, and this is the read key. Got it. Okay, that's the number that you don't block him, you're going to read him. Right. Okay, the left guard is going to base block here. You're going to get a double team on the nose. The center and right guard are going to zone the nose up to the will. The tackle, I'm going to leave him blank for a second, but the tackle has got to block the Mike Backer. We're going to get to that in a minute. These players are going to out block the outside runs. So remember, the best, the, the, the concept of the inside zone in a spread play is the tailback is going to run the inside zone. Right. The quarterback's the outside That's play. It. So inside play, outside play with the exact same blocking scheme. These players out here, the perimeter players, are going to block for the outside play. The tight end, the H and the X. So this is inside zone. Tailback's your inside runner. Quarterback would be your outside runner. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Now, back in about 2005, we started to notice that we didn't have enough plays for the tailback to carry the ball on the outside. And our quarterback, she like an Alex Smith, wasn't really fast enough to get out there. So we came up with this concept. And that's the same exact blocking scheme. That's the beauty of the play. Move the tailback to this side. Right. Okay. Now your tailback, remember there's an inside play and an outside play, all in the same blocking scheme. Tailback comes across. Quarterback is going to shuffle one step that way, still read the defensive end. Okay. The tailback is now 
He's the outside play, which you just saw a minute ago on the play. That's J.K. Dobbins in space. The receiver is tight end blocking for him. The offensive line is blocking for the inside player. Who is that? That's the quarterback in this look. The tackle, the reason I just left him blank, this is fairly simple block. Now, I didn't say easy, but simple. Right. This takes some work, and that all depends on the defensive player or defensive end. If he's inside, the offense lineman or tackle has a choice to go outside, or if the guy's outside defensive end, he can go inside. Right. The term or sound bite, through or around. You can go through or around, but you got to get the mic. So the player getting ready to watch, what we just watched, was J.K. Dobbins on the perimeter. Right. Offensive line still blocking inside zone. The one you're going to watch next, the defensive end comes up field. Right. Justin Field takes one step, he pulls the ball, and then now he is the inside zone runner and he scores a touchdown, especially now. Here's what's neat about this. I'm going to put this number next to the quarterback. Four, three, <laughs> six. That looks, the play looks a little bit better when you have an athlete like that carrying the ball. That's one of the best players in America. All right, as we just showed the viewer on the board, this is the read key for, remember, read key for right. the quarterback. Right. So you're going to equate numbers because they have six people in the box right now and the seventh defender is going to be out here. These four are going to block those four. The tackle is responsible for him. The tight end is responsible for whoever comes off the edge out here. The tailback's going to come across. The quarterback stripe of his helmet is going to stare right at him. He's going to take a one shuffle stuff. He's going to make a decision. If the shoulders are square, he's going to give the ball. If he gets any width or any upfield, he's going to pull the ball. And now he's the inside zone runner. Right. Offensive line zones left. Yep. Quarterback reads 97. Well blocked. And number one launches himself in the end zone. Wow.